If you want to stop paying extra taxes and penalties to the IRS, I want you to watch and listen very carefully to this video because so many people, including myself, have paid very unnecessary penalties to the IRS when they didn't have to. And if you and your spouse both have jobs, if you have multiple jobs, or if you have a side hustle that makes a substantial income, you need to watch this video through and through. And there are many factors going into this. One, your employer can't make any changes to how much they withhold your income tax unless you make the changes. Two, your employer doesn't know if you have an additional income source or if your spouse is working. I don't want you to find out that you owe tens of thousands of dollars in taxes and penalties by the time you file your taxes in the following year. So in this video, I'm going to show you the full tax breakdown of your income tax. If you have multiple income streams in your household and how you can make those changes in your W-4. And before I get into it, I want to show you this comment on one of my videos. If you're wondering why I make these videos, this is one of the reasons why. This guy said, I roll over my traditional into a Roth before I watch this video and realize I will have to pay tax on that huge amount because I didn't research that part before I converted it. And otherwise, I wouldn't have converted the entire thing at once. I've clowned myself with a sad and crying face. So I want you to share this video with as many people as you can, because if they fully understand how our complicated tax system works, you and everybody else could save so much money in taxes every year. But anyway, let's go through the first example. Let's say you're single and you have two jobs and one of them pays you $61,750 and other one pays you $60,000 a year. The standard deduction for 2024 is 14,600, which means that the first 14,600 you earn is considered tax-free. So your total gross earning 121,000, but after the standard deduction, it's $107,000. That is your adjusted gross income when you calculate your taxes. So with the $107,000, in taxable income, your first 11,600 is taxed at 10% or you're going to owe $1,160. The next 35,550 of your taxable income is taxed at 12% or $4,200. So remember that the U.S. income tax is a progressive tax system, not a flat tax system. It's not like a sales tax when you pay for goods and services and get charged seven or 8% of the item. That would be a flat tax. And the next $53,375 of your taxable income, which would add up to $100,000, is taxed at 22%, or you're gonna owe $11,000. And because your income is between $100,000 and $192,000, the last part of your income is taxed at 24%, or uh, almost $1,600. So as long as your income stays under $191,950, you're going to be taxed at 24% for that portion of that income. That makes sense so far, right? So when you file your taxes with your CPA, TurboTax or H&R Block, this is what's going to show you. Your effective tax rate is $18,758 or 17.5%. How did I get this? I just added up all of the tax dollars here, 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 and here. And that add up to $18,758. For the longest time, I thought if I made $100,000 a year, I would get taxed at 24% or $24,000. And that's not the case at all. This person's marginal tax rate is at 24% because that's the highest tax bracket they're going to be in. But the total effective tax rate is actually going to be 17.5%. If you're still lost in this, just rewind this video and watch it again slowly. And you can change the speed in this video from 1x to 0.75x. I have practiced to slow myself down when I talk because a lot of people complain that uh, I talk too much. Well, I talk too much when I get too excited. But this is what your employer will do uh, because your job number one doesn't know that you have job number two or how much you make in job number two, right? Your two employers, they don't talk to each other. So using the previous example, your gross earnings 
in job number one is 61,000, right? And your employer assumes that you have a standard deduction of 14,600. So your taxable income for job number one is 47,150. So you're taxed at 10% and then 12%. Remember, this is from the employer's perspective, okay? The effective tax rate for job number one from the employer's perspective will be $5,426 or 11.5%. In job number two, you earn $60,000. The employer for job number two, their perspective also assume that this is the only job you have. So your standard deduction is 14,600. This is mistake number one, because you can only have one standard deduction, not both. So your employer in job number two is also going to tax you at 10% and 12%, which is mistake number two, because you should be at a higher tax rate than where it is now. So in job number two, your employer will assume that your effective tax rate is $5,216 or another 11.5%. And when you add both of them together, you're already contributing a lot less than you should be based on the progressive tax system I showed you in the first minute of this video. By the way, did you know that over 50% of Americans who make over $100,000 a year are living paycheck to paycheck? So is it always an income problem or a spending problem? If you're having trouble figuring out your budget, I encourage you to download a budget app called YNAP. YNAP stands for you need a budget. That's right. Whether you make $50,000 a year or $200,000 a year, every one of you needs to create a budget to achieve financial independence. You need to give every dollar a job so that you can be more intentional with your savings and spending. You can get a free trial without any credit card information by using the link in the description below. So going back to the original income profile of this person, this person is making a total income of $121,750. But after the standard deduction, the adjusted gross income should be $107,000. So remember that the IRS cares about your taxable income starting at $107,150, right? Not the gross earnings. Unless you're looking to exceed the standard deduction by itemizing your deductions, $107,000 is what you want to pay attention to. And based on this calculation, the IRS is charging you $18,758 in total taxes or 17.5% in effective tax rate. This is what this person is going to owe the federal government. Again, this is from the IRS perspective. But because the employer of job number one only withheld $5,426 or 11.5% because they don't know anything about job number two, and the employer of job number two only withheld $5,216 or 11.5%, you have a difference of $7,906 that you should have withheld extra with either job. I'm showing you the complete formula here, so feel free to pause the video if you need to. Do you see that I subtracted $18,758 here, right, from here, from what you're supposed to owe from what your employers actually took out. You have a deficit of $7,900. The next line is the percentage of federal income tax you withheld with your employers. Why does this matter? Because you're required to withhold at least 90% of your income or make quarterly tax payments if you're under withholding. In this case, this person under withheld the federal income tax with just 58% which is way below the 90% threshold. Let me know if I'm going too fast because I do talk fast when I get too excited. So not only are you going to owe $7,906 in additional tax payment to the IRS, but you're also going to owe the under withholding tax penalty at the time I'm recording this video. The 2023 tax penalty for under withholding taxes below 90% is 8%. So you're going to be charged 8% of that $7,906 and end up owing an additional $630 on top of that $7,900. And this person could have avoided the extra tax payment and penalty by adjusting step four of the W-4. And keep in mind that this is not in any form of specific tax advice because your financial situation is going to be different from mine or someone else watching this video. The best person to talk to would be your local CPA but if you need to talk to me about your personal finances in general, you can schedule a first session with me for absolutely free 
by visiting firesitcher.com slash coaching. But anyway, using the same example, let's say this person realized at the beginning of last year that he was going to be short about $7,900 in federal tax withholding if he get paid bi-weekly. This person should have had either job number one or job number two to withhold an extra $300 in federal income tax every two weeks. If you get paid on the 1st and the 15th, then you want to withhold an extra $330. And if you get paid once per month, you want to withhold an extra $660. That makes sense so far, right? It doesn't matter which employer you do it with. As long as you do it with one of them, it's probably better to do it with a job that has a consistent income rather than an adjustable income. And the other option is to make quarterly tax payments. And you can set aside some money to pay for those taxes later. And I have to do this for my business. But in this example, this person would have to pay almost $2,000 every quarter to the IRS because neither of their employers is withholding enough taxes, right? You actually don't need a CPA to do this, but I highly encourage you to talk to one if this is your first time doing it. Make sure to keep a receipt as soon as you make the payment too. You can go to the IRS Direct Pay, like the screenshot that I'm showing you right now. You can also go to the US Treasury's Electronic Federal Tax Payment System or even pay on the IRS To Go app. It's actually really simple to do. It's just not that nobody has really taught us how to do any of it. And speaking of the quarterly tax payments, let me briefly show you how it works. If you earn any income with no tax withholdings between January 1st and March 31st, your tax deadline for 2024 is on April 15, 2024. Remember, April 15th is the common tax deadline for the 2023 tax year, but it also happens to be the deadline for the quarterly tax payment for the tax year 2024. Business owners and self-employed individuals like me pay especially close attention to this because someone like me whose income is earned from YouTube doesn't withhold any federal income tax. So I have to make the payment on my own. And the rest of the tax deadlines are pretty self-explanatory. Just keep in mind that the income you earn from September 1st to December 31st, you have until January 15th next year to make the tax payment. You typically don't start filing your taxes until February of the following year anyway. And you need to be very aware of the tax withholding if your income is over $150,000 or $75,000 if you're married and filing uh, taxes separately. If you're going to owe at least $1,000 or more in federal income taxes this year, you need to make the quarterly tax payment to make sure you're above the 90% threshold. Keep in mind that the threshold is actually going to be 110% of your prior year's tax liability. If your income is less than $150,000 a year, then you still want to maintain that 90% tax threshold or 100% of your prior year's tax liability. And if you generally owe less than $1,000 in taxes, then there's not going to be any under withholding tax penalty. So again, if you're someone who has multiple jobs of income from multiple W-2 jobs, you're married and both of you have W-2 jobs, or you're a self-employed individual with multiple sources of income, you need to make sure that you set aside more money to your federal tax withholding. Taxes don't have to be complicated if you truly understand them. I have seen many people who end up paying more than they should have because they didn't pay attention to their finances. Feel free to share this video with anyone who might need it. You can always download my financial resources for absolutely free by visiting firesearch.com resources.